Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Harakakwadash. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, who you ignorantly call God. In the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, I would also like to give a double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that have taught me this truth. And I would like to say a sincere shalom unto the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four winds of the world, unto the servants, the men, the prophets that are prophesying and laboring in this truth and in this doctrine. Unto you, I say shalom. Famine is becoming, becoming a reality sooner than you think. All right. And everyone's focus right now is on the, the, the war with Russia and Ukraine. But the underlining uh, prophecy in that is, besides the war, is the famine that's going to result from this, okay? Because you have to understand, Russia and Ukraine, they're, um, one of their main export is wheat, all right? And they supply wheat to damn near uh, parts of Northern Africa, the whole, damn near the whole Middle East, and also parts of Europe, which, and, you know, of course, you need wheat to produ produce bread. All right, so they're going to be. It's going to be a chain reaction of events that take place as long as 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 long as this war it continues, and it's, it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. All right, so this is a chain reaction of events that's going to take place, this which is going to lead to a famine. All right, and the people here in America, you know, they 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 never they never uh, um, they never uh, experience a famine. All right, because everything is at your fingertips. You can you know you can get groceries delivered to you you can get groceries 24 7 you know uh, uh um you know everything is at your disposal all right you can get anything you want when you want it but people here are are beginning to see a trend with the increase of uh of meat you know of course with with, with uh with gasoline with the recent war going on but with meat is also increased uh, um just regular um uh, um items you get from the grocery store they're they're slowly increasing but it's going to get to a point where those items that you are, they're going to increase drastically where that's going to cause hyperinflation, where you might want to want some bread and it may cost you $50. All right. And the, the, the cold part about that is it's not just the bread costing $50, but it may only be 20 loaves in the store. Okay. So it's, it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, um, it's going to be, uh, um, you know, prophecy on top of prophecy because these famine and the pestilence, uh, uh, um, the uprisings, you know, the people, those are, you know, tier, you know, second tier prophecies, you know, and, you know, at the MOTB and World War Three are, you know, first tier property prophecies, but these prophecies are coming to pass and you're seeing these things take place. All right. And, and you, and you would think that these things are moving slow, but actually they're moving fast. This, this shit is happening. All right. Not to, you know, if you, you remember a few years ago or last year when they had that polar vortex in the, um, was it the, the uh, uh, Central America and you had those floods that, that flooded all that farmland and, and killed all that livestock, you know, eventually that, that um, those losses from those farmers is going to take effect. And, and, and you're seeing that right now. All right. So I'm not going to read these. I'm not going to read all these articles. I'll read a little bit. But this this war is taking a, a making a big threat on uh, um, Europe and uh, other countries because these other countries are already in economic turmoil. And, and there are a lot of them are already dealing with some sort of inflation. All right. So when there's a scarcity of, of wheat in um, other um, in other goods used to produce food, there's going to be a, it's going to be a um, it's going to be a famine. It's going to create a famine and famine doesn't necessarily mean there's not going to be any food. There's going to be a shortage of food where you, you know, like I said, like, 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 like we always say that these grocery stores only uh, only have three days was it three days worth of food? All right. So every three days or uh, uh, every two days or whatever it may be, a, a truck may come in and to supply that local grocery store. But pretty soon these trucks are may, may come in, you know, twice a week versus three times, four times a week. And eventually uh, once a week and eventually maybe once a month. Okay. Because it's, that's because it's, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a chain reaction of events that's going to take place which is going to cause these truckers not to come in, which is going to tr cause the food shortages, okay? And, and like, like I said, along with the inflation, and, and eventually comes hyperinflation. And with the dollar um, decreasing every day, all right, the, the, everything is going to be in shambles here, especially in America, all right? And you're, like I said, you're seeing these things take place over in the uh, uh, these other nations. 
And and like I said, once America somehow, some way enters into this war, enters into this conflict, you're going to see the effects take place right here in America. When was the last time this place was really at war? You figure uh, maybe Desert Storm in, uh, was it 91, 92, something, something like that? All right, you can't even really count the Afghan war because it, 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 it you know, it, it really didn't, it really didn't take effect on America, um, you know, uh, as as this next world world world's war that we're coming into. All right, it had a little effect on the oil and everything, but at the same time, it, it didn't it didn't really hit home like this this next world's war is going to hit because the Most High has set all this up for this point for these prophecies to take place: the famine, the pestilence, the uprisings of the people. You think people are going to just be sitting back chilling while you know they don't got jobs, they don't got money, and they don't got food? Hell no, people are going to be uprising. People are going to, you know, uh, uh, um, shit, pretty much go out and get it for themselves. All right, as the scripture says, and I'm going I'm to grab that in second verse of the 15th chapter. But let me read a little bit of this. This is, uh, you know, you got some of these articles are from mainstream media and some of these are from like uh, alternative media sites. But they're all saying the same thing. When you got the mainstream media saying the same shit as alternative media, you know, it, you know, it's some truth in it. OK, because these um, these mainstream media, they don't tell the truth all the time, but they 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 can see, you know, this shit is clear. All right. They can't they can't hide this anymore. All right. It says Russian Russian war is world's breadbasket threatens food supply. It says Russia tank and missile besieging Ukraine also are threatening a food supply and the livelihood of people in Europe, Africa and Asia who rely on the vast fertile farmlands of the Black Sea region known as the breadbasket of the world. Ukraine farmers have been forced to neglect their fields of million, as million flee, fight, or try to stay alive. Ports are shut down to send wheat and food staples worldwide to be made into bread, noodles, animal, animal feed. And there are worries, and the worries, Russia, another, so lucky, let me, this thing is tripping. Where was I at? Um. Russia, another agricultural powerhouse, powerhouse could have its grain export upended by Western sanctions. So they're putting the sanctions. It is, they're putting the sanctions on Russia, but Russia feeds all these countries. The RI supplies uh, uh, um, resources to all these countries. So yeah, they're 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 sanctioning uh, Russia, but they really hurting their allies. That's how stupid America is. Okay, and eventually Russia's going to cut off that oil. All right, uh, uh, to to Europe, and they're gonna have to try. They're gonna have to try to get it from from Israel, but it's gonna it's gonna cost more. All right, so they, hey, they these dumbass Americans are shooting themselves in the foot by by hurting all their allies. That's why these their allies are gonna um, eventually turn on them. Okay, but this is all a part of the Heavenly Father's plan. All right, this is all prophesied uh, uh, two thousand years ago by the prophets. Where there where while back to the article while there have not being global disruptions of wheat supplies, prices have surged 55% since a week before the invasion amid concerns about what could happen next. If the war is prolonged, countries that rely on affordable wheat exports from Ukraine could face shortages starting in July. International Grain Council Director Arnad Pettit told the Associated Press. So you see it's a chain reaction of events that's going to take place. They said it's going to hit them hard in July. It may hit them sooner than that. But you see the effects, and I don't think Russia's not going anywhere, okay? And and, and Ukraine, they're going to fight as much as they can, but they, they they might as well submit, okay? And you know, like I said, who knows where this leads to? Hopefully, America, you know, gets involved, and the EU and the NATO get EU and the NATO get involved, so we can get this thing cracking. But we we understand as prophets that these things take time. The wars take time to to build up to where you know you know it, it's everyone's going all out okay and it says farmer farm harvest from com, com, combines let me see combines a wheat field near the village of Tilbaska in Russia so they have a lot they have a lot of resources uh, uh in, in Russia a, a, as well as Ukraine okay so this is direct this is this war is disrupting um a lot of commerce that takes place in 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 not just in Russia and Ukraine, but it said Africa, the Middle East, uh, Europe, and Asia. All right? So let me get this. This one kind of says the same things. We need bread, fears, Middle East as Ukraine war hits wheat imports. 
So the Middle East is, is the same way. Pretty soon, these um, these food markets may only have a, a, a pile or two of, of bread that they can sell when, at, um, at a price of, you know, a, a thousand percent of what it once was because of the food shortages. All right. And we, we're just, this is just speaking of bread. This is not even speaking of meat and uh, 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 produce. All right. This, is gonna, this, this famine is real. All right. And these Jakes out here, that are, are, are people, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans don't understand this, that you think that this shit is a joke. You think, oh, it's happening all the way over there in Ukraine and Russia and the other side of the world that it's, it won't eventually happen here. It's going to happen here. It's going to happen. It's going to be even worse because this devil Esau is going to starve you niggas out, man. He's going to ration food. He could be a family of five and you may get only uh, uh, enough food to feed two people. OK, the food rationings are coming. All right, where they're going to say we don't have enough food. All right, when Esau has warehouses full of food, but they're going to starve you niggas out, man. That, that's that, that's that's how this devil operates. That's how this devil works. And you're going to see first, you're going to see firsthand a lot of you Israelites that don't believe and, and, and continue to walk hand in hand with this devil. He's going to show you his horns. This other article I had, um, he said the world could be on the brink of an energy crisis rivaling the 1970s. Says the IH. S uh, markets Jurgen, and this is going into the petrol, also going into the natural gas too, because uh, not only does Russia supply uh, Europe with um, with petroleum uh, with uh, with 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 fuel, they all, they also provide them with uh, natural gas. Okay, so like I said, this is a chain reaction of events. Gas is going to be gas is going to be through the roof. All right, I just read, I just saw something where Russia said that. A gas could go from to three hundred dollars a barrel. It's like at hundred and twenty dollars right now. So, hey, it's, it's, it's things are things are happening. Prophecy is taking place. Okay, so let me um, screw, excuse me, grab some scriptures as it pertains to the, this famine that's coming because these things are prophesied. These things were, were, were told of the prophets, you know, long ago. All right, there was famines in the ancient world. Okay, but but but. But those that follow the Lord, those that believe, those that had faith, the Lord took care of them. All right. The Lord provided for them, just like in these days. The Lord, somehow, some way, the Lord is going to provide for his elect. The elect members are going to be in the cities with no food. All right. Or the only, only way to get food is you have to have a, a certain pass with, <laughs> in the form of that MOTV to get food. And somehow, some way, the, uh, uh, the elect is going to get fed. The elect is going to have abundance in that day, as the scripture says. But first, we got to get to the family. We got to get to 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 the 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 um the scourge that's coming for our people because they they're not hearkening to the the words of the prophets. They're not hearkening to the uh, the uh, the Lord. Okay, they they just think that America's gonna be here. You know, I could just go over to Vons or Albertsons or whatever your local grocery store, and it's going and the shelves are gonna be stocked. You dumb niggas should should, should have learned a lesson from that pandemic when you could see the shelves were empty because people didn't know what to expect. All right, but this 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 famine, this pestilence, these plagues are coming like a thief in the night, and you're not going to have time to run to the store, run to Costco or Sam's Club to stock up on anything. All right, because the government they've put in law, they, they got laws in place where they take control of all the resources. All right, meaning food, meaning gas, and 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 uh in um the time of martial law. All right, all these things were passed by Obama and all these other presidents who you niggas love, man. All right, this is um, 2 Ezra chapter uh, 15 and verse 5. Behold, save the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. The Lord is doing this. Not anyone else, not Esau, Edom, okay? The Lord. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. All right, the Lord is doing this because wickedness is is, is, is polluted the whole earth, Okay. This has to come to pass. It must come to pass. All right. Let me jump down to uh, verse 17. Uh, uh, mm, I'll start at 15. For the sword and the destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. And there shall be sedition among men invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor prince, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power invading one another breaking into people's houses breaking into people's cars okay just running up and strong arming people okay that that's what's going to take place 
because hey, it's going to say it in the next few verses for the lack of bread, for the lack of food, for the lack of money, for the lack of, you know, resources, medicine or whatever it may be. We're coming into those times and, and where, where people are not going to care whether you are, whether you're old, whether you're young, whether you got kids, whether you're, your son or daughter is handicapped or whatever it may be, whatever your whatever your your situation, people are not going to care. They're going to be looking out for them and theirs. OK, a man shall desire to go into a city. A man shall desire to go into a city and and shall not be able. And hey, that's your uh, that's your, um, your your martial law where there's going to be set curfews, whether you follow them or not. They're going to be set. But the thing about these curfews is. If you break them, you're, you're more than likely going to it's the, the, the consequences are lethal. All right. They're not going to be just all oh, this round you up and, you know, telling you to get back in your house. They may give you a warning shot, but that's it. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity. Oh, actually, Slacky, I'll read 18s. For because, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, shall but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and shall spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. A lack of bread, all right? Hey, people, after, after what is it, nine missed meals, people lose it. Okay, people lose. It. They don't know what to do. The people are gonna they start eating plants. They'll you know they'll start doing whatever they got to do to get uh, 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 some form of food. All right, and, and like you like a lot of our people don't understand what the hell is about to take place. What's going on? All right. Let me jump over a chapter to uh, Second Ezra sixteen and um, three. A sword is sent upon you, and who who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you. And who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? May one drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Or may any one quench the fire and stubble when it hath begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot from a strong archer? The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? The Lord sent these plagues. This is a plague. Don't think that, oh, they're going to recover and, you know, and it's going to be peace. No, the Lord sent these plagues. And, 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 and it's, it, has, it so happens to be that Russia and Ukraine supply all these nations with wheat. Okay. The Lord, the Lord is in ultimate control. If you can't see that, the Lord didn't give you eyes to see. The Lord is orchestrating this famine. Okay. The Lord is doing this. Hey, hey, and, and it's beautiful. If you have eyes to see, you can see the Lord work. Those two countries manufacture and, and, and distribute all this wheat. Damn through, they said the bread basket of the world. Okay, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and um, verse 24. Um, actually, um, 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsold. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. That Those are your stores. That that's Then that happened. Where the storehouses, these grocery stores, these Sam's Clubs and Costco, they're going to be found empty. Where the truckers ain't coming in no more. They're not bringing in supplies. They're not bringing in food and produce. All right? And, and you know, you can go in your gro local grocery store right now and the shelves will be full. All right? And because nothing's happening right now. But that's why the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. All right? When you when you think it's peace and safety, that's when the Lord is coming. That's when you think is everything is all good. You got your feet kicked back. You had a barbecue and you chilling, you eating your, your your ribs and your hot dogs and hamburgers. And next day, all right, while you all full off the bullshit, this, you wake up and and, and and the store is empty. All right. It, it's a, a a shortage of food. Gas is twenty dollars. All right. And the only way you can get some food, you got to stand in a long ass line. It ain't no guarantee that that you'll be able to get there and, 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 uh, and get inside and get anything. That That's the reality. That's what's taking place. OK, so hey, hey, we're getting closer and closer. But like I said, this is not to tell brothers and sisters to go. Oh, let me go store up and let me go. Uh, um, let me go to Costco and store up on this and get this. And no, because you don't know. You don't we don't know when the Lord is coming. We don't know when the famine is coming. OK, but we what we do know is you better store up on faith because the, the, like, as the scripture say, the knowledge and wisdom will be the stability of thy time. All right, this knowledge is going to guide you. The spirit of Yahweh Shem Shai is going to guide you in these times. Not no, not storing up on food and, and and water because at the same time, say say you store up on food, water, 
You got all these things. You got food. You got, you know, everything. And, and an earthquake happens and, and destroys your whole house. Or or better, or better yet, a, a flood happens and destroys all your shit. It's no good. All right. But if you're putting your faith in your Habashim Yahushai, when that time comes, you know, the Lord may put the spirit on you. Oh, let me go buy a little extra. Okay, let me just, you know, store up a little bit. The Lord ain't going to put the spirit on you to store up a whole bunch of shit because the Lord wants you to depend on him. The Lord wants you to put faith in him. Okay, and then the Lord will, 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 will guide you and your family to a meal. Okay, to some to some to some uh, uh, some food when it when, when it's convenient when, when it's convenient for the Lord to, to bless you. Okay, this is Daniel chapter twelve and verse one, and then, and at that time Michael shall stand up, that great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation, even to that same time, and and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, and that's talking about the Lamb's book of life. All right, the scriptures. All right, but those that are not found in the book are going to perish. All right, whether it be from the famine, the pestilence, the sword. But we're coming into that time of trouble. All right, at, at like a time of trouble that, that has never been before. Worse than slavery. Okay, worse than coming over here on slave ships. It's going to be worse. All right, where you may not go eat. You may not go. You may go without a meal for four days. But your faith is what's going to keep you. Your faith in your Habashim is what's going to keep you alive. It was just gonna keep you keep your um your you're keeping your faith that the heavenly Father, hey, somehow, some way, is gonna provide for you. All right, let me grab this in uh, Isaiah sixty five, and it reads um, sixty five, sixty five and thirteen. Thus saith the Lord, power. Behold, my servant shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice. But ye shall be ashamed. And, and the servants of the, the Lord, the prophets, the, the you know the one third, the the the, the uh, friends of the prophets, the family, the family of the prophets, they're going to eat. Okay, the Lord ain't going to. The Lord may you know. Uh, I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but somehow, some way, they're going to find. They're going to eat. You know, they're going to find. The Lord's going to find a way, make a way for them to eat in that day. For them to be, you know have enough to, to, to survive and to move on, you know, or, or, or whatever, you know, whatever they're going through. The Lord's going to provide for their families to eat. But the two thirds of our people, the Edomites, the heathens, they're going to be ashamed in that day because they, they mock and talk shit about the prophets. Okay. They, uh, um, you know, they scoff at the prophets. They, 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 you know, try to get the prophets locked up. They try to get the prophets killed. Okay. Um, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Actually, let me go to Job 5. And um, verse, uh, verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. So that's speaking of the elect. When they, when those times come, the elect, the spirit of the elect, the faith of the elect is going to be built up so high, none of this stuff is going to be able to touch them. None of these things are going to be able to affect them. None of these things are going to be able to shake the faith of the elect in that day. I got a few more scriptures. Let me get Second Esther chapter two. I'm gonna start at verse twenty-four. Um, is it two? Let me see. Yeah, two and twenty-four. Abide, my abide still, O my people. And take thy rest, for thy quietness still come. Nourish thy children, O thou good nurse. Establish thy feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh. cometh. Others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. It's, saying, it's basically saying the same thing. That was said in um, the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. 
All right. Hey, the, the, the Lord said that the elect is going to have the, uh, have an abundance and be merry in that day. All right. The, the, hey, people already look like it, look at us like we bugged out. OK, but how much more in that day when people are dying right in front of us and people are, are starving and babies and kids and, 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 and uh, women are dying and we're married. All right. Because we're, we're married because we have faith in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. We have we're married in that day because um, we see the Lord working. We see that we see the kingdom. All right. We know that these things must come to pass and we're one step closer to the kingdom. All right. It's going to be a lot of death. All right. So, hey, shit, get used to it. You know, that that's something that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, because, you know, in this country, in America, no one has seen mass death like in these other countries, like in these third world countries. You know, uh, uh, there's, you know, these Middle Eastern countries, countries in Africa, they seen death. They seen people blown up by missiles and bombs and shit. They ain't seen that here, but it's coming. OK. Um, let's see. Let me grab one last script. Uh, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 33. And I'm sorry, verse 18. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver thy soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Okay? The servants of the Lord, to keep them alive in famine. That that's that's an A. The Lord is a man, the Lord is a man that he shall not lie, and the Lord is going to keep his promise. All right, to keep those that truly believe in him, that are sincere, that that are doing his will, the Lord is going to keep you alive and family when people are dying left and right. You didn't win a whole week without having no food, but somehow, some way, the Lord is keeping you alive. All right, the spirit of the Lord is dwelling in you, which is 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 keeping you alive. Which is you know, each day and each day that goes by that you haven't eaten, your faith should be built in the Lord. All right, but hey, this is the this is the test. This is that that test that's coming up. OK, where well, the Lord is going to test your faith. The Lord is going to say, if you truly love me, hey, put your trust in me, put your faith in me. And, um, you know, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, 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 yeah, provide for you. OK, so uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying unto the elect. And I would like to give all praise, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.